presented by Pharma. Hey, good morning, Playbookers. I'm Rogan Winovalin. It's Thursday. Peter Baker and Susan Glasser's new book, The Divider, Trump in the White House, comes out next Tuesday. But we got some early excerpts. It's our Politico Playbook Daily Briefing. Breaking this morning by way of the Associated Press. President Joe Biden said Thursday a tentative railway labor agreement has been reached, averting a potentially devastating strike before the pivotal midterm elections. He said the tentative deal will keep our critical rail system working and avoid disruption of our economy. It's the new book that everyone is talking about. Peter Baker from The New York Times and The New Yorker's Susan Glosser will release The Divider, Trump in the White House, 2017 to 2021 on Tuesday. But after The Guardian's resourceful Martin Pengeli snagged a copy early, the book's embargo was lifted last night, leading to a flurry of coverage. It's worth checking out today's playbook written edition for a full breakdown of the book. But here's one story from Peter Baker himself in The New York Times. It's an incredible account from the book about the time that Trump's friend, the cosmetics billionaire, Ronald Lauder, convinced him that the U.S. could buy Greenland. Mr. Lauder discussed it with him from the early days of the presidency and offered himself as a back channel to the Danish government to negotiate. John R. Bolton, the national security advisor, assigned his aide Fiona Hill to assemble a small team to brainstorm ideas. They engaged in secret talks with Denmark's ambassador and produced an options memo. Mr. Bolton, concerned about expanding Chinese influence in the Arctic, thought that an increased American presence in Greenland made sense, but that an outright purchase was not feasible. Mr. Trump kept pushing. He suggested taking federal money from Puerto Rico, which he disparaged, and using it to buy Greenland. On another occasion, he suggested outright trading Puerto Rico for Greenland. In the CNN write-up about the book, there's this assessment of the Russia question from a former top Trump official. Following a 2018 meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Helsinki, Finland, after which Trump sided with Putin over U.S. intelligence agencies who had determined Russia tried to interfere in the 2016 election, the top U.S. intelligence official was left wondering what Trump's real motives were. Dan Coates, the then director of national intelligence, reflected to associates afterward, according to the book, I never could come to a conclusion. It raised the question in, in everybody's mind. What does Putin have on him that causes him to do something that undermines his credibility? Americans are broadly skeptical of policymakers' ability to define the terms of abortion access in the U.S. following the Supreme Court's overturn of Roe v. Wade. That's according to a new poll out today. 7 in 10 Americans don't think politicians are informed enough about abortion to create fair policies, a position held by majorities of both the Democrats and Republicans, according to the survey of more than 20,000 adults by the 19th, a news organization focused on gender and politics. A majority of Americans also said they think abortion should be legal in all or most cases, while 35% said abortion should be illegal in all or most cases. Here's what's up in Washington today, starting with the White House. At 3.30 p.m. Eastern, President Joe Biden will deliver the keynote speech at the United We Stand Summit. Afterward, Biden will attend the 45th Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute Gala to kick off the White House's celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Here's what's on the vice president's calendar. At 10.10 10 a.m., Vice President Kamala Harris will deliver the opening remarks for the United We Stand Summit. At 1.45 p.m., Harris will host a multilateral meeting with a collection of Caribbean leaders. The White House monkeypox response team and public health officials will be at 10 30 a.m the senate will meet at 10 a.m the house will meet at noon to consider various legislation with first and last votes expected between 1 45 and 3 30 p.m all right for more news on what's breaking in dc right now subscribe to the playbook newsletter that's at politico.com playbook our music is composed by the mysterious breakmaster cylinder i'm rogu manavalin have a good thursday we'll see you first thing tomorrow morning did you know 39% of insured Americans say they don't understand what's covered by their insurance. Health insurance coverage should be predictable and transparent, and insured Americans agree. Learn more from our latest patient experience survey report at pharma.org.